Okay, welcome, Melissa Wu. Uh, this talk is remember what it is like to be new to GNOME. Welcome. Thank you. So today, uh, I'm here to talk about remember what it's like to be new to GNOME. And today, I want to share my experiences as a new contributor to GNOME and as somebody outside of the community. Hopefully, I'll provide you with an, oh yeah, I remember that moment and also offer some suggestions to help enhance the newcomer experience. First, let me share a little bit about me. I'm from Pasadena, California. I studied sociology and political science in school. And then I went to business school and I studied marketing and, and business. And I received a graduate certificate in technology commercialization. After that, I went to work for a public safety technology consulting company. I left there to start a travel agency called Woodland Travel. And then a friend introduced me to GNOME, and now I'm a project coordinator at the GNOME Foundation. A few things that you, that you did not hear me say was free software, Linux, coder, and programmer. I come from a very fuzzy and limited practical technical background. And my knowledge of free and open software and Linux and GNOME when I first started was minimal, a very small dot in this vast sea of information. I knew that I had to get up to speed very, very quickly. So in the last six months, I've done everything I could to get involved in the community. I <clears throat> visited GNOME.org and, and the link Get Involved and did a deep dive on the website. I attended conferences, FOSDEM and SCALE, and unfortunately that was cut short due to the um, ongoing pandemic. But I connected with community managers and joined listservs. I hosted and attended community chats on Twitter, Rocket Chat and webinars. I participated in social media on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Reddit, Rocket Chat discourse and Instagram. I became a friend of GNOME and I met lots and lots of people. Needless to say, the last six months have been like drinking from a fire hose. Um, it's a lot of information all at once. But now I know a little bit more and my circle of knowledge in this vast sea of information has increased. But along the way, there are some challenges that I, that I had and ones that I want the community, I guess, to consider. For me, uh, joining the community introduced me to a new vocabulary and way of thinking. I learned about FOSS and different organizations like KDE, Ubuntu, and then places like GitHub and GitLab, and even time uh, zones like UTC, which of course we knew about, but is used very commonly uh, within the GNOME community. I also had to consider what images to use, were they copyright written, uh, what platforms to use. I received um, some feedback that, you know, Twitter isn't free and open software. Why are you using it? Um, things that I didn't actually consider before. I also had to figure out what resources were available, where to get, where to, where to go to find these resources and how to use them. The resources are, the resources are out there but they're not always easy to find. And sometimes you have to dig and search to get the ones that you need. You know, there are also lots of chat rooms and message boards and places to go for finding information. But the question is, where do you start? There's discourse, there's rocket chat, there's IRC, there's telegram. And for me, keeping them all straight and following all the conversations sometimes isn't the easiest. In fact, there was one person I was trying to get a hold of and I was given their email address and phone number. So I reached out to them via email and I reached out to them via phone when I didn't hear from them. And I never heard back. And I asked somebody, do I actually have the correct information for them? And they said, yes, but you know what? Go to Telegram. They're very responsive on that platform. So I went there and sure enough, within seconds, I had a response. But had I not inquired about the best way to reach them, I wouldn't have been able to necessarily track them down. I also found that you don't know 
what you don't know. So like search engines, if you don't necessarily input or ask the right questions, you may not get the right answers. And this makes it hard for those that are new because they don't always know the right questions to ask. The other thing that I found within the community is that there are many points of entry. So unlike other organizations, where there might be a single point in the form of human resources or a new volunteer orientation, the GNOME community is very open. And this is one of the, actually the benefits of the community. You can enter the community from a number of different points in a number of different ways. But what this does is it makes it hard for those individuals that are new to find a path and for us to engage them in the long term. I also found that who you know matters. I was very, very lucky when I joined to have a few individuals that basically held my hand the first two months and continue to hold my hand now. They have been extraordinarily patient in helping me navigate the community and walk me through some of the things that I assume they thought was very basic. And over the last few months, that list of individuals has grown and I've been able to go to other individuals for guidance and help. I've been truly lucky to meet people willing to help me and to answer my questions, but I can only assume that not everybody has the same relationships and may not be able to find the same connections that I have, that I've been able to find. So how can we help these new contributors? People come to a community looking for a place, whether it's because of a shared interest or a desire for friendship or just needing a place of connection. People come looking for a place they'll fit in. And there are a number of ways we can welcome and engage new contributors. Here are some resources and guidance that I've found successful that have been successful in other communities. And, and I wanna make a point of saying that I've listed these things because I think they're important. They're important to remember, but I don't wanna imply that these aren't happening within the community. This is just a highlight of what I think will welcome and engage new contributors. On an individual level, level, patience, patience, patience. Not everyone knows that a fix has already been suggested multiple times or that maybe it's offensive to, um, that something is offensive because it isn't free software. Um, you know, we wanna remember what it's like when you started and be open to suggestions and able to guide the new contributors in ways that the community may already, already know. We also wanna make sure we share our knowledge. We don't wanna assume that the person knows everything that you already do. Sometimes something that seems very basic uh, may be new to them. My mentors were incredibly patient in sharing their knowledge with me and the history of the organization. They allowed me to ask questions, no matter how silly they thought they were. And they were always available to me via email or chat or phone call. This was invaluable in my introduction in the community. And I'm not sure that I would have had uh, the success or uh, path that I've been able to take without them. My mentors also did everything they can to introduce me to other community members, uh, whether it was providing a little bit of background or formulating a connection for me saying, oh, this person is a board member and this is how this is how they came to the GNOME community. It was really helpful in getting to know um, individuals a little bit better and made me feel very comfortable when I went into a situation where I didn't know anybody. The other thing that we wanna do is make sure we check in with new contributors. How are they doing? Do they need help, guidance, direction? Sometimes, Sometimes you can get lost in a sea of resources and proving an anchor or a point of check-in is incredibly helpful. We wanna make sure, and then within an organization, there are other things that we can do. We can streamline resources. GNOME has so many resources available um, and they're not all sort of in the same place or easy to find. It does take a little bit of digging to find them. So potentially streamlining re resources could be helpful to a new contributor. 
Related to that is utilizing an onboarding roadmap to help guide a new contributor through the organization and the different areas um, of participation. The um, Get Involved page is really, really helpful in uh, providing content as well as a basic roadmap within certain areas. But I'm wondering if an overview of the organization might be helpful to somebody new coming on board. New contributor networking and social events, whether in person when we can or online um, when we can't meet in person, are also helpful in forming um, new connections and maintaining um, relationships. I know that it's sometimes hard to go into a new environment when you don't know anybody. And so as a mentor or as a welcomer of new contributors, sometimes a personal invitation of, hey, are you going to be there? I'll be there, I look forward to seeing you type invite is helpful in making somebody feel welcome. Again, I know that we've done this in the past and that we continue to do this and it's been a little bit of a challenge with uh, the current environment, but this is definitely something that is helpful for new contributors. We also may want to consider creating a point of entry for newcomers. Um, because the community has so many points of entry and places to participate, I'm wondering if um, channels like the newcomer channel that we currently have um, is something we can continue to guide people to, or even an orientation of sorts for newcomers so that they become familiar with the organization as well as, um, again, the different resources that might be available. But now I'm sure you're asking, this all sounds great and wonderful, but why does it matter? It'll matter soon, I assure you. Um, so it's important because for several years, the free and open software sector has struggled to attract and maintain the number of high quality developers that the GNOME project needs to drive the project forward at the pace we would like. And I've seen this in various forms, uh, formats um, in the last six months, but it's definitely just something to keep in mind. The other statistic that um, I've been using quite frequently is one that's a little bit dated, but one that I think um, sort of is a good example of engagement. And that's that 64.5% of engineers do not contribute to open source projects for more than one year. And this is compared to 55.5% the year before. Now, why is this important? Well, companies that excel at onboarding and employee retention experience 2.5 times the revenue growth and 1.9 times the profit margins of companies who struggle with these two criteria. Now, this is on the for-profit side, of course, um, but on the volunteer side, that a devoted volunteer can give thousands of hours to your organization over a lifetime and make a huge impact on your cause. If you treat volunteers well and give them the tools they need to succeed, they can strengthen your team and help advance your mission. Engagement and retention make a difference. A successful community has all kinds of people in different kinds of roles. And embracing people from different backgrounds and technical capabilities strengthens community and also makes it more inclusive. But in the end, new contributors need to walk through the door themselves. But we can help them by giving them the key and a roadmap and welcoming them with open arms. Thank you very much for coming today. And here is my contact information, should you wish to get a hold of me. Before we go into any questions, we have a couple of other um, sessions that I'll be a part of that we'd love to have you join. There's Cocktails and Mocktails with Woodland Travel later this afternoon, where we'll be making some drinks at the end of the day. There is a year of strategic initiatives at GNOME with Molly DeBlanc tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow morning, depending on where you are. I'm also hosting a social hour travel talk. Do you miss traveling as much as I do? And then, and that's on the 24th. And then be sure not to miss the community engagement challenge winners announcement on Saturday, July the 25th. So I hope to see you guys all at one of these future talks. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you so much, Melissa. Um, looking at the other part here. 
someone says, please, can you share your slides? Sure. Once I figure out how to do that, I'd be happy to. <laughs> Great. I don't see any more questions, but there are some comments in the in the Water Track 2 channel. Which channel? It's the Rocket Chat Water oh, okay. Track 2. Great, I'll check it out. If anybody has any follow-up questions or wants to connect with me, um, here are my contact information. And also, I'm happy to put my slides on GitLab, which I will do, and uh, they'll be up there shortly. Thank you. Thank you.